God bless you. This is Bishop Donovan Miller, the pastor of Mount Olive Outreach Ministry, located 729 West Quilly Street in Griffin, Georgia. I am so glad that you tune in to our television broadcast tonight. I believe this television broadcast will be a great blessing to your life. Listen, I'm telling you, it is the word of God that changes life. For the scriptures say, you shall know the truth and the truth shall made you free. Listen, I want you to stay tuned and I want you to hear what, what the word of the Lord is saying to you tonight. And at the end, I'll be back to pray the prayer of faith for you. 31, 32, everybody get your Bible, your iPad, your tablet. Whew, Jesus. Whew. Whew. I want everybody, just before you, we read our scripture, shake your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, I don't know what he told you, but whatever he said, get ready for it to come to pass. Tell him every stronghold that has held back, held things back, is now being removed. I feel, look, I feel a release on you. I feel a release on you. Some people are going to walk out of this building today with a fresh anointing on your life. And matter of fact, not only it will be fresh, but you're going up. When you walk out of this door, you're going to be walking in another level. When... Let's read our scripture. Tell somebody, I say, I believe you're talking about me right now. Yeah, I'm walking up out of here in a nut. Oh, yes. You're stepping in something new. You're stepping in a greater unknowing. I told you all December the 31st, 2015, when that clock hit 12 o'clock, you stepped into a new season. You stepped in. Let's read our scripture. Everybody ready for the scripture? All right, everybody, let's read. I want everybody to read uh, St. John 8, 31, 32 out loud, and then we're going to read verse 36 out loud. Everybody have it. Let's read it. Begin. If you continue in my words, then yeah. are you my disciples indeed. And ye you shall, shall know, know the, the truth, truth, and the truth shall make you free. Verse 36, let's read it. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. If the Son shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Say that, come on. If the Son shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Father, we thank you for the revelation and knowledge of God's word flowing in this room today. God, we thank you for what you're about to do. And so, Father, we just give you honor, glory, and praise. Do only what you can do like you want to do it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Can everybody shout amen? amen. Come on, real scream amen real loud. Amen. One more time, amen. amen. You can be seated, everybody. We, gonna, we, we, we got something to share. We're going, we want you to be seated. Amen. Whom the Son set free shall be free indeed. God spoke to me in the beginning uh, of the ending of last year, of the, uh, December 2015. The Spirit of the Lord said something to me. He said, 2016, the year of the breakthrough. So I began to pray, and during our consecration, the Spirit of the Lord said, Now, I want you to go start preaching breakthrough. I want you to go and preach breakthrough. Now, at uh, Mount Olive's church, we've been preaching on the subject 
of let's make a difference. But he told me, he said, when you go and you go out, I want you to go and preach breakthrough. As you preach breakthrough, I know, he said, I'm going to cause people to break through. Now, what does it mean to break through? Somebody say, what does it mean to what? Yeah, what does it mean to break through? When, I, when you hear breakthrough, what, what, what is it saying? To break through means it is the removal of resistant forces. It is the removal of resistant forces. It is removing that thing that held you back from what God said. Oh, my Jesus. It is the remover of resistant forces. Everybody say, the remover. Come on, say it. Re the remover of resistant forces. What is God saying? God said, breakthrough is about to hit your house. I, I wish I had somebody in here. I say, breakthrough is about to hit your house. And I was just thinking about it. Yeah, breakthrough about to hit my house. Breakthrough about to hit my life. Breakthrough is about to hit my church. I need somebody in this room to say breakthrough. I believe that a lot of you, you came to Fifth Sunday. I mean, some came because it is Fifth Sunday, but, and you said, well, I'm going to be faithful. But that's other came saying, Bishop Miller, I, I came to Fifth Sunday because I need breakthrough in my life. I need God to do something for me. I need God to cause some things to turn around in my life. I've been dealing with things. I've been fighting. I've been going through one struggle after another. But God told me to come up in here tonight and tell you that this is your time for breakthrough. That that which has held you back is now being removed. And you're about to step over into a place that you've been trying to get for a very long time. Somebody say breakthrough. Well, I begin to think, okay, I begin to think about our lives. So when the Lord started talking about breakthrough, you got to understand that when he talks about breakthrough, somebody say breakthrough. He means that breakthrough will hit every area of our life. That is, God said, I'm going to cause many of you to have the financial breakthrough that you need to get the things done that needs to be done. Not only that, some people need some breakthrough in their, uh, in their family, but they need some breakthrough financially in their church. That means that's some money that we need. It got to happen. But God said, I'm going to give you breakthrough. Somebody say Breakthrough. But not only, not only financial breakthrough, but God said, I'm pouring out spiritual breakthroughs today. That I will cause you to break through spiritually. I will cause your prayer life. Some of you, you've been struggling with your prayer life. It's like you tried to pray like you are not getting anywhere. I mean, it's just like you get down to pray and just like, I mean, prayer life, like it's just a fight. Like you've been in such a fight, you've been in a battle. But I come to tell you that your prayer life is about to break through. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But not only that, you say, Pastor Donovan, listen, I'm telling you, I, I mean, my study of the word, it's just been a struggle with me. Like, i just been in a rut. i just been in this place. Like, I just can't hardly get out. I went through so many different things. It looked like things just been got me down. But I come to tell you today, get ready to come out of it. I come to tell you that the devil can no longer hold you back because God said I'm sending breakthrough. I need somebody to scream breakthrough in the house. Yeah, 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 yeah. God said I'm sending, I'm sending, I'm sending financial breakthrough. I'm sending spiritual breakthrough. But not only that, God sending breakthroughs in your physical health. And you know, you say, Pastor Donovan, it's just like over the last few years, I've been having five, I've been having physical attacks in my body. It's like the devil been trying his best to stop me from doing what God want me to do. But I'm coming to tell you, you're gonna have a physical healing up in this place tonight. That you are about to get heal in the name of Adaboshe. You're about to get healed in this room right now. Somebody scream breakthrough. breakthrough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody say breakthrough. Oh my God. Yeah, but not only, not only you saying, oh God, I need a breakthrough in my physical body, but somebody saying, I need breakthrough in my family life. It seemed like my family, I mean, it's just like glory to God. It's been a battle going on in my family. It's just like, I mean, I mean, look like husband and wife. Every time you get on a good page, something always come up and look like it tried to sidetrack you. But I come to tell you today that 
that God's about to give you a breakthrough. Yeah, he's about to turn that thing around in your life. Oh my God, that's trying to hinder that man. You men of God, you woman of God. God got his hands on you. But the devil been trying to bring a wedge between the both of you. But God say today is breakthrough. Everybody say breakthrough. breakthrough. One more time, everybody say breakthrough. But then I begin, I'm not preaching long because I got some instruction of some things I believe God want me to do. Hey. Oh, Jesus. Could I get everybody in this room to shout breakthrough one more time? I want you to get ready for breakthrough in your church. I mean, find that's a breakthrough in your church. Yeah. I want you to think about it. Glory to God. That God going to give you all the money that your church needs. That God's going to cause the breakthrough to come. Listen, you say, well, pastor, if God going to do it, I wonder who he's going to do it through. I'm looking at the people's in my church. And I don't see anybody in the church have the money that I need. But God said, if you don't count the people, you don't have to worry about the people you count. Somebody say breakthrough. Somebody say it one more time, shout Breakthrough. Yeah, I feel God. Somebody say, I feel God is about to turn things around in my life. God is about to do those things you've been wanting him to do a long time. I say breakthrough people are going to get saved in your church like never before. I see a harvest on the way. Because God say when you walk out of this place, you're going to walk out in the anointing of breakthrough. That the resistant forces will be removed. And the thing that you need God to do in your life, those things that have been hard will now become easy. Can I get a witness today? Somebody say breakthrough. Well, if we're going to have breakthrough, there's three important things we need to look at. Number one, if we're going to break through, we got to have a breakthrough in our thought life. Listen, the Bible said, as a man thinketh, so is he. And I like what Ephesians 3.20 said. Now to him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. So let me tell you this. You got to think breakthrough. You got to start thinking and take control over your thought life. You got to start thinking, thinking your way out of your situation. Somebody see, yeah. I read over in the book of Acts that Paul said, I think myself happy. Look at somebody say, I think myself happy. I want you to look over at somebody and say, neighbor, you win or lose in your thought life. You can't think defeat and live in victory. You got to take authority over your thought life. And you got to make up your mind. I'm going to think about my church being full. I'm going to think about there's nowhere to get in. I'm going to think. Everybody say, I'm going to think until I think myself happy. I'm going to think about everything God told me. I'm going to think about what God's word says. Look at somebody and say, Nabal, you go in the direction of your most dominant thought. If you think about losing, you go in the direction of losing. If you think about winning, you're going the way of winning. I want you to do, I want you today to look up today and say, I'm going to think about it. See, yeah. I read in the book of Mark that the Bible says that the woman that had the issue of blood, the Bible said she thought within herself. Look at somebody and say, Nabal, you got to think within yourself. I want to know what you've been thinking about. Has you been thinking about a major breakthrough? Have you been thinking about everything in my life? 
that is out of order is about to get in order just think about it you ought to shake two or three people hands and say neighbor I've been thinking I've been thinking thinking about my victory I've been thinking about a turnaround think can I preach up here I said I gotta think my whole life got to be in the right direction ask your neighbors and neighbor what you been thinking about you got to get the thinking oh yeah some of you you're thinking about what haven't happened you've been thinking you've been thinking in the negative but flip the switch and go to thinking oh my god that god is about to do something big in my life god is about to take me and my wife and my family and my church to another level i'm thinking about it yes for as i think so am i so you got to go to thinking but number two you gotta believe i say you gotta believe you gotta believe god on a big level look at somebody and say neighbor i dare you to believe god for something bigger for something better believe god i say believe god god is not true with you god i say god is not true with you he's not true with your ministry i don't care who walked out god getting ready for somebody to walk in yes yes you gotta believe all things are possible to him that believe grab somebody by the hand and say neighbor i believe god i believe the big god that do big things is about to show up and show out in my life shout yeah shout yeah wow i believe i believe tell your neighbor i believe i believe i'm about to have a major breakthrough in my life i believe that my church that they are standing in line to get in my church i believe could everybody rap back and say oh lord i believe Can I preach up here? I want everybody to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the size of your God is determined by the size of your faith. If you believe big, you'll see a big God. If you believe little, you'll see a little God. But God told me to tell you that I'm about to give you a breakthrough. Shout yeah! Now everybody see that list for me. Let me slow down. I'm about to get happy. Everybody say number one. I got to think right. I got to what? See, a lot of you, your biggest problem is your thoughts. 
You think defeat all the time. You, you, you think losing. I don't care if you have one smack or two woman show up at church. Think big. Say this out loud, everybody. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. But I'm only moved by what I believe. And I believe God. You believe who? I want everybody to say this with me. Say this with me. Say this with me. Say this with me. God is about to do for me. Bigger than what I thought. Now, this is what the scripture says, Pastor. Look what the scripture says. Now, to him that's able to do his seed and abundance above all, you can ask or. So, what God said, you can't even think about what I'm going to do. Because I always do bigger than what you think. So, if you thought big, God said, I'm going to do something bigger than that. Because God will never let you keep up with him. Let me finish because I got to finish. I got to finish. Glory to God. Because I, I, I want you to hear this. I got to think big. But number two, I got to believe big. I got to believe big. I got to believe big. I got to believe. I got to. I got to believe ridiculously. I got to. I got to what I call stupid believing. Somebody say, you're a fool for believing that. That's all right. Because God told me if I believe, he'll move on the level of my belief. See, your problem is you're trying to be in a safe zone, but you're leaving God out. But God needs somebody to get crazy and believe him for something big. Listen, don't let your confidence be, mis don't let your comfort be, confidence be misunderstood as arrogant. Now listen, I'm coming somewhere. Number one is what? Think. Number two is what? But number three is confess big. Now I want you to write this down. Your confession is the devil's defeat. Your con is the mm. There's something God is just waiting for you to say. Listen, your confession is what God, what give God permission to move. All right, Pastor Anna, come up real quick. Let me show you. Let me show you. Let me show you. I got to show you. All right. Will you take this man to be your wedded husband? She say, I do. Will you take this woman to be your wedded wife? I do. Guess what? Listen, just I do gave God permission to join us together. Look, all he needed was a word. And the word was I do. And the I do knitted our heart together. All God waiting on you right now is to speak a word. So hear my question. What you been saying about your church? Has you been calling your members those crazy Negroes? I mean, what you been saying? You look, you call your church crazy Negro, that's all you got. You called it, it manifested. I say I got men and women of God and they show up. Your mouth is interrupting your miracle. So what am I telling y'all today? I feel like I have a church. Can I have church? I got to think. I got to believe. And I got to confess. God says these are the most, these are the three major keys that you got to operate. You got to operate. You got, if you're going to walk in 2016 in major breakthrough, you got to think breakthrough. 
Now, what do I mean when I say think breakthrough? You got to think I can't be stopped. I can't be stopped. I can't be stopped. There's no demon. I mean, the devil can't even, I mean, listen, he can't, he can't even factor up another demon that's big enough to stop you. Everybody say, I can't be stopped. No, I say, y'all said that cute. I need somebody to shout, I can't be stopped. I I need some men and women of God to stand up and shout it and let the devil hear say, my church will not be stopped. I don't care what happened. You won't be stopped. You won't be stopped. You won't be stopped. You will not. You will not. You got to think like that. Your mind got to wrap around. I'm winning. I'm winning. Now, God bless you. I know you enjoyed that word tonight from the Lord. Listen, I'm back to pray the prayer of faith for you. I want you to understand that God wants to change your life and make a difference in your life. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what's happening in your life, but listen at this. Your first step to a turnaround is you giving your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, it's so simple. You say, Pastor Miller, I want to give my life to Jesus, but I just really don't know how. Listen, the Bible said four simple steps. If you repent, believe, confess him, and receive him in your heart. He'll come in and he'll be the Lord of your life. What do you mean repent? Repent means to have a change of mind, to make a quality decision. Believe, believe what? Believe that Jesus died and that he rose again, that you might be saved. Confess, you confess Jesus as the Lord of your life. And, and listen, when you confess him as the Lord of your life, he'll come in and he'll be your Lord. And all you got to do after you confess, just receive him in your heart. Listen, I want you to repeat after me and let's pray this prayer because I know God will change your life tonight. Let's pray. Just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I ask you to come in my life and forgive me and cleanse me of all my sin. Tonight, I make you Lord of my life and I receive you in my heart. Listen, if you prayed that prayer, I tell you, he came in and right now he is your Lord and your Savior. Write us, write us and let us know about the decision that you have made. Yeah, P.O. Box 1591. Griffin, Georgia, 30224. We would like to hear from you. God bless you. We love you now. <laughs>